Jenny. She's <laughs> like, I, I, I love she's over. <laughs> Amber, <laughs> Amber already got the corrections done. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Jenny. All right, and thank you, Amber. Um, if uh, if there are no other questions, then we will. Uh, I would accept a motion to approve the um, minutes as presented. So moved. Thank you, Casey. Second. And Jenny. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. <clears throat> Next, we have the first reading of policy number sixty thirteen six zero one three. And those are always really fun. Do I have to read it? Come on. Do I have to read it, Lauren? Thank you very much. You all got a copy? Yes. Is there email? All right. Any questions about that? And this policy deals with? The cash reserve. The cash, the cash reserve. reserve that we talked about uh, quite a bit at the study session. So um, anything else? Questions from anybody? All right. That will be the first reading. We have just for the information of our our folks here um, we read these uh, three times and at the third meeting we vote on them so we have time uh, they're done once a month for three months so these will be due in october january probably mm -hmm. yeah no we can do december yes, we can do December. okay um all right and <clears throat> next we have a discussion of perf janet do you want to share that so we currently have per for employees, um, but with the addition of the adjunct teachers, they do not qualify for turf. So we would be looking to add that benefit for them under our perf. Um, and we need to expand our language of which employees would fall under the perf uh, for that benefit. So this would be the addition of the adjunct teachers. For example, Logan Young would be an adjunct teacher who's doing our civil engineering and that would then allow us to provide him that benefit as an employee. And for those of you who don't know, most of you know that TURF is Teachers Retirement Fund. TURF is <laughs> public. Public <laughs> employee retirement fund. Public. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it didn't do that for me. What's her? I know. <laughs> Aside from the God. I guess. <laughs> But anyways, public employees retirement fund is perf, so just that brand. Do we need to vote on that? Yes. Yes. If, Janet, does this, is this retroactive to the beginning of this? No, it year? would kick in. I believe that we figured November 1st would be the first of it. By the yeah, time we get it sent in and rolled over, it would be November <coughs> 1st. Because it's still subject to in-person approval as mm -hmm. well. To add the additional right. language. All right. Does this still have a 10 year investment? Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board? Any questions from the community? At this time, uh, I'd accept a motion that we approve the PERC notification. So moved. Thank you, Ethan. Yes, sir. Mark, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. The financial report. You want to share that, Shada? Sure. Okay. Okay, so first up is our education fund. I'll let Scott catch up. Okay. I'm sorry, Amber did that. <laughs> <laughs> so our receipts for the education fund for the month of September are one million sixty-four thousand two hundred twenty thousand and thirty-four cents. Our year-to-date receipts are nine million four hundred ninety-four thousand six hundred ninety-six. Um, dollars even and then our uh, monthly expenses are nine hundred and sixty six thousand five forty one sixty one we did do a one hundred and fifty thousand dollar transfer between education to operations we were going to do three hundred thousand but given that we've got a three pay month coming up in November and some other unexpected expenses I held back on the other half just to make sure that we were, we were going to be okay in both funds um, so that leaves us with the appropriation balance of 2,924,941.81, which we have spent 23 and a quarter percent, or three quarters percent. And then that leaves us with 10 million, or excuse me, 9,989,220.19. And the ending balance for the fund is 390,142. 
our debt service fund as we've receded in our uh, lit money which was seven thousand two hundred and thirty seven dollars and ninety two cents for the month that leaves us with year-to-date receipts of two million seventy one thousand five hundred and seven dollars and seven cents uh, our appropriation balance for our loan payments remaining are one million five thirty nine one ninety five twenty five we spent almost, we spent 47%, 47.48%. Our year-to-date expenses are $1,702,687.75. That was for the first round of debt payment. And then our cash balance is $1,833,897.77 that will be spent in no, December. And last is the operations fund. And this one, our receipts were $7,371.61. Uh, we did our monthly transfer in at $150,000. And our year-to-date receipts then are $3,385,743.70. Our month-to-date expenses were $335,569.32 with an appropriation balance of $1,786,90. Um, that's 35.05% of our net appropriations. Our year-to-date expenditures have been $3,310,774.10, leaving us a balance of $102,915.82. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, any, uh, any questions from the board regarding the financial report? Any questions from the community regarding our financial report? If not, I will accept the motion that we uh, approve the financial report as shared. <coughs> so moved. Thank you, Jenny. Sorry. Thank you, Casey. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. <coughs> Next, we move on to the claims. We have claims and payroll. I missed a page. Right now. Okay. Claims. We have claims totaling seven hundred seventeen thousand two hundred seventy-nine dollars and thirty-one cents. We got that already. Oh, we're already to donations. We're moving right along. We okay. just approved the fund. Yeah. Yeah. Just the fund report. No, no, so we just said we got approved. So anyone do the payroll? Payroll donation. Claims and payroll. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> just check. That's all right. <laughs> it was your turn. I messed up last <laughs> time. Okay. Uh, claims totaling seven hundred seventeen thousand dollars two hundred nine or seventy nine dollars and thirty one cents. Any questions or comments from the board about the claims? No, ma'am. Nobody. And we also have payroll totaling one million seventy-six thousand four hundred sixty-eight dollars and fifty-eight cents. Any questions about that? Everybody want to get paid? That's how that works. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any questions from the community? Um, at this time, I will accept a, a motion that we approve the claims and payroll. So moved. Thank you, Ethan. Second. Thank you, Casey. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Next, we have donations. And I did check. You haven't updated anything, Amber, have you? Good no. deal. All right, that's good to know. <laughs> Uh, today's donations, RMS Facts Class received an unknown amount that included six pounds of meat and buns for the Robert Bobby Dell, or donated by Robbie, Robbie, Robert Bobby Dell, and we appreciate that, Mr. Dell. Uh, RHS Civil Engineering Class received $1,100 from Grade Laser for the Grade Laser for the Classroom. And that is from the Heidi Family Foundation. So we're very grateful for the Heidi Family. RHS students, $300. Uh, 
I, I messed up clear back to the beginning. At the beginning, it's the facts class, and it's the, oh, I did say those things, sorry. RHS students, $300 for Hugh O'Brien leadership training, and that is from the Optimist Club of Rochester. And RCSC Columbia School, $320 for food service accounts overdue from the Rochester High School class of 1963. And very grateful for that. Uh, we often have uh, families who can't pay. And uh, uh, we have wonderful people who donate and uh, make that happen for us. Uh, the total for the uh, donations comes to $1,620.00. And um, and at this time, I would accept a motion that we approve the donations as submitted. So moved. We got a Mark and we got a Jenny. I'll second. Thank you. Okay. And moving on to oh, step. What? Yeah. Oh, we got a vote. Yeah, you're right. All right. <laughs> okay. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Thank you. Next on our agenda is the uh, the personnel report, and uh, I will read these and try very hard not to butcher names, but that's always one of the challenges I have when I read some of these. Um, the way this works is that we will. Uh, I will read the entire uh, personnel report, and then uh, after that is read, I will ask for comments from the board, and then if there are any comments from anyone in the gallery on this agenda item, um, I will go through the list, and hopefully I got these in order. I have, I have two pages or three, Amber? That should be three. One, two, three. Okay, we stuck to something. Did you see me drop one? You're very. Yeah. Yes, it is. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. So. I will first read through the uh, personnel report. Recommendations for Columbia School. Heather Holloway changed to sub-teaching position per her request. Lillian Scott, kindergarten instructional assistant, hourly rate $14. For Rochester Middle School, Lola Bradley, long-term sub for Mrs. McSherry from 10 21 to 12 20 24 daily rate $140. RHS, fall intercession. Isaiah Schaefer, math teacher, hourly rate $34.21. Brian Wilson, or Bryn Wilson, pardon me, Bryn, ELA teacher, hourly rate $35.60. Deb Wolford, math special services, hourly rate $56.91. RMS athletics. Billy Newton, seventh and eighth grade volunteer coach. I assume is that that's basketball. Billy, I know you're here. Yes. Thank you. Who did this? You did this. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. T.J. Du Bois, seventh and eighth grade volunteer coach. I assume it's the same thing, basketball. Correct. All right. T.J.'s here. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, moving on. RHS Athletics, winter coaches, swimming, Stephanie Brown, head coach, stipend $4,500. Erica Abbott, assistant coach, stipend $2,100. Matt Steininger, assistant coach, stipend $2,100. Bryn Wilson, assistant coach, stipend $2,100. Uh, Carmen Reeves, volunteer. Abigail McCarter, volunteer. Lola. Brady, volunteer. Lindsay Barts, volunteer. Just one of the All right. And this is girls basketball. Girls basketball. Girls basketball. <clears throat> Thank you. It faded out on me. Joe Burris, head coach, stipend seven thousand eight hundred sixty dollars. 
Isaac Schaefer, assistant coach, stipend, $3,900. Jacob Nye, assistant coach, stipend, $3,900. Joe McCarter, volunteer assistant coach. Colt Meadows, volunteer assistant coach. Zach Deshawn, volunteer assistant coach. Brooke Topper, volunteer assistant coach. Boys basketball. Rob Malco, head coach, varsity, stipend $7,860. Rex Reinhold, assistant coach, stipend $3,900. Sean Kelly, assistant coach, stipend $3,900. Wilson Lee, freshman coach, stipend $3,900. Luke Smith, volunteer assistant coach. Mike Malco, volunteer assistant coach. Abby Overmeyer, volunteer assistant coach. Becky Lee, spam found me even here in a meeting. Okay. <laughs> Becky Lee, volunteer assistant coach. Lucas Malco, volunteer assistant coach. Joe McCarter, volunteer assistant coach. Alec Garrick, volunteer assistant coach. Alec Holland, volunteer assistant coach. 24-25 wrestling coaches. Tristan Wilson, head coach, stipend $4,350. Bryce Roberts, head assistant coach, stipend $4,350. Damick Beck, assistant coach, stipend $3,928. J.D. Howard, assistant coach, stipend $2,000. Abram Ferrara, Assistant coach, stipend $3,000. Brady Beck, volunteer. Derek Holloway, volunteer. Sarah Wilson, volunteer. Hayden Prater, volunteer. Drew Sailors, volunteer. Marshall Fishback, volunteer. Noah Swango, volunteer. Wade Schaefer, volunteer. Jacob Schroeder, Volunteer. Aaron Swango, volunteer. Eli Swango, volunteer. Ethan Holloway, volunteer. Grayson Garb, volunteer. Jaden Geller, volunteer. Alex Deming, volunteer. We also have the resignation of Kayla Woodcox. She resigned effective 10 18 24 from Columbia. What's a DD? Development and legal aid pre -K. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the personnel report. At this time, are there any questions or comments from the board regarding the personnel report? I have a clarifying question on the process because obviously there are many people here that want to speak. Um, my understanding from past practice, and Lauren can correct me or guide this, we welcome comment on the agenda item of the people who are listed. Is that correct? Or just the agenda item in general? Comment can be had from the public on any topic. Related to the personnel report. On any topic that somebody from the public would like to address with the school. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. So uh, I have these in order of when you signed in. And if you'd like to speak on this, Topic. I ask you to just come forward so we can all see you. And first person is Darla Beck. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Um, my name is Darla Beck. My sons have been in the Rochester Wrestling Program since they were just little guys. And I just want to take a few minutes to share a letter that was written um, by the former head wrestling coach to their wrestlers and their families. Wrestlers and wrestling families, first, congratulations to your new head coach, Tristan Wilson. Coach Wilson and his staff will give you great effort and coach your kids well. I ask you to be patient with them as they navigate their new roles. The wrestling program has, have, has many moving parts and roles to fill, and the first ever IHSAA girls program starts Monday. Let them get their bearings before anyone asks what's next. All wrestlers, I have seen your posts, your text messages, and talked to many of you in person. I do not care if you are male or female, six years old or 16 year old. The best wrestler in our program are the worst. I do not ever want to hear I'm not wrestling if Coach Guard is not our coach. Our program was built on and has thrived to overcome adversity, being tough, working hard, doing the right thing, and picking yourself up when things don't go your way. So while you think you're being loyal to me, you're not. You're weakening the program and doing the opposite of what you know to be right. Wrestle. 
If your coaches can swallow their pride and go against everything they believe in to coach you, then by God, you can do the same. These guys are sacrificing more than you will ever know. The best way to beat them is to show up, work hard, thrive. Average people hate that. Don't be average. Russell. If you need me, you know where to find me. I don't need a title to be a coach. This is just one example of why the former wrestling coach is so important to all of us. We want to support Coach Wilson with what he needs, and he needs and wants the former head wrestling coach to help him continue this great program, to help his staff continue to succeed, and most importantly, to help all these kids in the program succeed. We are all standing here today because we know and have seen the impact of the former head wrestling coach has had on our kids and how he has built a successful program over the years. You won't see a community standing behind just any coach. That should tell you something about this former wrestling coach. My personal experience is looking at the impact this coach has had on my sons. My boys have grown up with this coach and his staff, and most of their lives have been spent in the wrestling room with all of them. This coach played a key role in helping my boys become who they are today. We know that Tristan Wilson needs him, and I look at all these young kids who love this program, want to grow up and be successful wrestlers, they need him too. We want to support Coach Wilson with what he needs to be successful in this program, and I hope that you'll see this too. Thank you. Thank you, Darla. Good evening. Um, hope you can all hear me. Um, I am here on behalf of my son Garth and our entire Simpson family. I'm going to read a letter that Garth has sent to me. Um, he's living in Texas right now, so he's not able to be here tonight. He said, hello, my name is Garth Simpson. I am a 2011 Rochester High School graduate and alum. I spent 14 years in the Rochester wrestling program under the former head coach. I started my wrestling career with him at the age of four, all the way through my senior year. After high school, after my high school career, I went to Manchester University and wrestled there as well. I now reside in Texas. <clears throat> so I'm not able to make the meeting tonight in support of the new head wrestling coach who is also a Manchester University graduate and alum. Given my relationship to the program and with the former head coach, as well as, as well as in support of the new head coach, I wanted to give some words of encouragement and a prospect into what the Rochester Wrestling Program has instilled in me. Through this program, I learned mental toughness, physical toughness, how to set personal goals, how to work toward achieving those goals, accountability, leadership, forgiveness, as well as many other skills that have translated into real life outside of the wrestling room. Because of my time spent under, under the mentorship of the wrestling program, I am a proud, supportive, involved father and husband with the ability to support my family. These skills are a direct reflection of the mentorship I received from the former head coach. Many of you may know my story, but for those of you who do not, I wish to share it with you tonight. During my junior year of high school, I made some poor choices. I was suspended from competition near the end of the wrestling season. This was devastating for myself, my family, my coaches, and my team. As a team captain, I had failed so many who looked up to me. My goals and dreams were shattered and I entered, ended my junior year with a single one point loss to the eventual state champion and had to sit out and watch someone else accomplish what I had worked so hard for. Following that season, I asked my teammates to allow me back onto the team in hopes of mending my failed leadership. Lori, you're three yes. Minutes, right. Pardon me? You're three minutes, right. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Tell so Garth I said hello. I will, thank you. Um, next we have. Uh... Did you want to finish? Did you sign up to my Okay, next we have Paul Deming. 
Thank you for allowing me to speak. Good evening, my name is Paul Denning and I'm the proud parent of Alex Denning, 2024 graduate of Rochester Community High School. I'm truly grateful for the chance to speak before all of you tonight. Our journey with Rochester Community Schools began back when Alex was just a third grader. We enrolled him in a two-week wrestling clinic hosted by the Rochester Wrestling Club. After just two weeks, he was hooked. He joined the Zebra Gold Youth Wrestling Team and we were we first to met the incredible coaching staff. Over the years, our family became part of the Rochester wrestling community. The coaches played a, played a huge role in shaping Alex, not just as an athlete, but as a person. Sure, winning is exciting, but what really stands out is the invaluable life lessons he learned along the way. How to handle defeat with grace, the importance of respect, even how to serve others through programs like the Rochester Rent Dresser. As a father, what means the most to me is that Alex learned what a good character truly is. My wife and I laid the foundation at home that having coaches who reinforced those values made all the difference. They became our partners in raising our son. Alex has to be transferred to Rochester before his eighth grade year. He wanted to be challenged in both sports and academics. With the strong relationships we built, it was an easy choice for us as a family. Alex craved coaching, competition, and mentors who would invest in him. I want to take a moment to commend Rochester Community High School. We've made so many wonderful memories here, witnessing some amazing competitions. The hard work and dedication of administrators, teachers, coaches, staff, and parents truly deserve recognition. We feel honored to be part of the RHS community and see firsthand the positive impact your efforts, everyone here, have had on our students and athletes. Alex's story is one we love to share and it highlights the incredible dedication of the coaching staff. Yes, wins matter. Nobody likes to lose, but emphasize here is a character that counts far, behind, far beyond the map. As a Connecticut native who moved here to be near my wife's family, I often wish I had a youth program like Rochester's growing up. The wrestling coaches generally care about the kids and their development. Now I'd like to share a few words from Alex who is currently attending the Citadel, the Military College of South Carolina. I quote, I've been through the previous head coaches wrestling practices, which set the foundation for making the challenges I see today much easier. The previous head wrestling coach is one of the main reasons I decided to go to military school. He has prepared me to be challenged and not take the easy road. Thank you all for your time this evening, and a huge thank you to everyone in this community. The Deming family will always be grateful for the impact you've had on our son's life and the guidance and influence of their previous wrestling coach. Thank you. coach <laughs> know that he was not an in-season coach. <laughs> um, so 24, 25 years of coaching, 25 years of coaching, in-season hours, that's 10,100 hours. If you think about the fact that he didn't stop when wrestling season stopped, I figure that's probably easily doubled. So what does that mean to a family? That's 20,000 hours that he spent investing himself in other people's kids. He missed some first steps. He missed some first words. 
He missed a lot of important things at home. And your coaches and their families will too. Rochester community benefited greatly from that coaching and from the whole coaching staff. They've benefited and transferred students, increased enrollment, good PR. Community that comes around a sport like this in a small school, you don't get anything better than a full gym for a wrestling tournament on a Wednesday night. You don't get anything cooler than that. We know how much this, this district has benefited from him. So my question is, at the end of the day, when just like that, it's over, is there a way that we could do better? Is there a, week, a way that we could do better to say thank you and to honor the 20,000 hours conservatively that have been given? Thank you. when wrestling starts and he says that he doesn't know if he's going to do wrestling anymore. He told me about Coach Guard and what was going on with him and I contacted uh, Guard to uh, find out for one if these were true and to give my condolences because he's been part of his life ever since he's been in the first, second grade. Um, he's an eighth grader this year so he's not even with Rochester Community High School. And Coach Guard has made such an impact on him that he actually thought about not doing something that he loves. He got hurt in, football, in a football game, and we had to end up taking him to the hospital later on. And the doctors wanted to take him off the game for a couple days. And he didn't want to. And I said, what do you love more, football or wrestling? And he told me wrestling. I said, exactly. So get well and be ready for wrestling season. And now look where we are. All these students need Coach Guard. And Coach Guard has changed so many people's lives. And in this small town, there is nothing for these students to do. If they don't have a good wrestling program or a good sport program, they're going to go to drugs. Do you want to see them dead in a couple years? I know you don't like somebody, but can you at least give it up for the kids? They're the ones that matter. Thank you, Gretchen. I appreciate your sentiment there. I hope you really do. I absolutely do. And I'm sure the rest of the board members agree. I doubt it. Uh, next, our last speaker here is Jennifer Branson. Branson. <laughs> yeah, that's my right, girl. Get it. Um, hi, my name is Jennifer Branscombe. I'm a 2007 Rochester graduate. I have two younger brothers who are an 09 and a 2011 graduate. I was introduced to wrestling at a very young age as my brother started around seven ish, my older brother. I remember Max being in the high school cafeteria when we first started. I watched several kids grow up to be amazing athletes. I was a wrestling manager from the beginning of my seventh grade year till the end of it, till the time I graduated. I was also a football manager beginning my freshman year. I am and always will be a supporter of Guard, even though the time he left in 2005 and 2006, that wrestling year was rough as we had a different coach because he went to go to Manchester College. Um, we then had Rick Troxel, even though we had more in numbers. Um, because my grade didn't want to wrestle with guard. Um, did not do our wrestling program any justice as Troxel did not care about grades or anything that did off the map. So he did not fill guard shoes and he came into checking in with schoolwork, life off the mats, and hobbies. It was a refresher for guard to come back my 2006 or 2007 wrestling year, my senior year. Um, my brothers also did not have guard as I think he chose family in 2008 and 2009 in the 2009-2010 school years. Um, but he's still a great guy. He did have young sons back then. Um, and we did have a good coach from Culver at that time. 
Um, but Gard did not only influence my life as a coach, but as a teacher. In hindsight, he was the best teacher I've ever had. He forced us to teach ourselves a new topic and do the homework, but we would go over the homework the next day. He was always available for questions, but guess what? This is exactly what college did, and no one understood that at that time. The only teacher who prepared me for this type of studying was Gard, and I've always told him thank you afterwards. But this is not always about Gard. He teaches loyalty, teamwork, but it's also for the kids. Don't give up. He's always on your side. Um, and don't let one family ruin it for you. But me. my daughter so um, I did have boys in guards program for just a short while uh, Philip who graduated in 2011 graduated with uh, Garth Simpson so he had uh, just two years of being coached by coach guard and coach Holloway and I forget all the others but uh, I think it developed his life considerably he became I don't know, ultra independent he could do his own thinking he became only a few that graduated from rochester community schools that went into the military and whether uh, what you think about the military i mean he went into the military basic training was probably a little easier for him since he had coach guard coaching him conditioning, which he's very good at. His kids are conditioned. I wish all the luck to all the wrestlers. I don't go to their meets. I'm not one that fills up the uh, auditor or the gym um, because of some problems, but uh, I follow them in the paper. And I am so glad that he has done so well and his coaching staff. I mean, it takes an army. Um, the uh, program, the Rent-A-Wrestler program that he started, sure it was to raise money to go to camps, which, what did they do? They helped the kids. Uh, and you know what else they did? They got these kids out, and a lot of them maybe physical work, during the summer to keep them conditioned not go in their basement I'm, like I know my son did um, drink beer that I did not know that he was drinking <laughs> and playing games that's what he does for these kids in Rochester and I'm just so sorry I'm going to be negative now I wrote all of you a, a email and I'm just so sorry there's so much politics that you ruined and maybe it's not ruined, the, the program will go on because of the dedication. I mean, you, you've read all the volunteer coaches. I mean, it will go on. But for them, it won't. What are you, a junior? He's a junior. Two years he had to coach his son. Two years. And you can't even let him be a volunteer coach or an assistant coach. And by the way, I think you should have, instead of just a volunteer coach as a female, you should really get an assistant woman's coach. Pay her. Because there's enough girls on that team to value that. That's all I'm saying. Coach Guard, wherever you are, I know you might not have believed me that I was a fan but I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andrea. Um, I appreciate you coming forward and sharing about the kids. Uh, at this time, um, we need to vote on the uh, personnel report. 
And once again, board members, any questions or concerns about the personnel report? I will accept a motion at this time. I move we accept the personnel report as read. I'm oh, sorry. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Jenny. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. And now, uh, Mrs. Vance. We'll go through our uh, directors and principals report. So, Mr. Haas, if you'd like to start with your um, report. Yep. So we just came off of fall break. We had an intercession over fall break, uh, caught up several credits for our students. Um, last weekend, we had two runners who advanced to regional, one young lady and one uh, gentleman, Callaway and Javier. So we are excited for them. Uh, the football team starts sectional this week. We do host the first round of sectional at home. Chris Hooks will be slaving away on Wednesday, painting the football field if anybody wants to help. Um, we have the uh, Soils team who uh, are going to nationals. They got second out of, I think it was 78 teams. Don't put me on 78. 62. 62 teams. Thank you, Amber. Um, that happens in late April, early May, but I know Mr. Pearson, when I talked to him today, was really excited about that opportunity. He said they were really close to bringing home the spade that he's fired up to win in the next couple years with his young team. Uh, they are also have the national convention. FFA does this uh, week, this Later in the week, I think they leave the 23rd to head to the National Convention, so those kids are going to go enjoy that experience. Uh, we are competing for the first time in the go Golden Shovel Competition in Indy with our heavy equipment civil engineering kids. As long as we get some safety courses passed here the next day, <laughs> day and a half, um, that they sprung on us. So we are working with uh, Mr. Heidi. As you saw his donation, we really appreciated that. Um, and so they're headed there Thursday this week. It's basically the donut schools and little old Rochester competing against each other as we are uh, one of the few smaller schools that have that option for our kids. Uh, we have PSAT, freshmen tomorrow, sophomores the next day, and juniors the following day. This year, instead of doing it in classrooms, we're gonna try and do it in our gym. So thank you to the fairgrounds for donating their tables um, that we went and picked up today. We appreciate that. Saturday. Big day for our marching band. They have the fall marching band uh, showcase. So we're really excited about that. Then on October 30th, we have the JAG initiation ceremony. If you haven't been a part of that, uh, Mrs. Burris is our JAG teacher. She does a phenomenal job with that as well. And um, we'll have the fall play on November 22nd and 23rd. We may have a board meeting before that, but I don't want to leave that play out. Uh, progress reports will be here the 20th of November. That'll be before we know it. And then, um, obviously, November 11th, we'll have some Veterans Day activities going on. So a lot of great things going on at the high school. <coughs> uh, we did have uh, girls basketball and girls wrestling kick off their season today. Girls swimming starts next Monday, right? And then eventually the boys are all kick in, and uh, we'll be off and running in the winter. And we're hoping uh, Coach Schaefer comes through and we get to host a sectional championship game here in two Fridays from now. So a couple big weeks going on for... Rochester High School. Thank you. I need from you. Continued support. I truly appreciate it. Thanks. This is Murphy. <coughs> we did our fall athletic season as well. Had a pretty successful season. Won a couple of titles in cross country. Got real close in volleyball. Got runner up to Southwood. Um, had one of our most successful seasons in football. So ended our fall athletics pretty well at RMS. Um, we have taken our first iLearn checkpoint. That went really well. We met or exceeded the state average in every category, so we're super excited about that. And congrats and thanks for all the hard work of my teachers. <coughs> uh, we did a couple fun field trips right before break. Fifth grade went to the Dunes. Sixth and seventh grade went to Fair Oaks. Um, sixth grade went to the Dairy Side, and seventh grade went to the um, Hog Side. We did College Go Week, had some successful trivia fun that week. Um, our PBIS Fall Festival and Powder Puff game was a lot of fun, and thank you to these two right here for a lot of their hard work on that. Um, we had Fall Intercession, 23 Kids Show. That was a big success for RMS as well. Coming up, we have our Halloween dance, which is a fan favorite with our Haunted Locker Room. So if anyone wants to come, that is November 1st. After school, it's a good time. Get around the Haunted Locker Room if you'd like. Uh, we will have a Veterans Day lunch on the 7th. And we did just kick off our um, Zebra Flamingo You've Been Flocked fundraiser. So watch your yard. You may be flocked with some Zebra Flamingos. <laughs> is and that, that's all I have. Is, 
that for the school at large or for a specific? Really student program. activities, some of the fun things that we like to do to try to fund those things that cost money that we want to continue doing for the kids. And what exactly should we be looking for? Some flamingos, yard flamingos that have been painted with zebra stripes. Oh, well. You can buy insurance if you'd not like to be <laughs> We are selling that insurance. So is that a contribution for the yard we want to have flop? You, there are all sorts of things you can do. Yep, <laughs> we can yep, for the right dollar amount. <laughs> Send me that for town talk. I will do that. <laughs> is the I Learn checkpoint this? Is this what you guys are piloting yes. this year? Okay. Yes. And this so is this is supposed to line up more accurately with the I Learn testing. This or is what is they're moving to next year. So, forgive me for my brain fog here, forgetting how this works. So, will they have to? Are they just doing checkpoints along the way, or do they also have to take the? I there is a summary. Um, uh, like a summative test this year, it's the same as it's always been. Plus, we're doing the pilot. Okay. Because we opted in. So this in. year is the is the double. But yes. Then after that, we'll be. Yes, and we're told there will still be a summative, but it will be much shorter. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Mr. Vernon, please. Yes, I have from Mr. Schneider as well for Columbia. So I'll, I'll do both here. We'll start with Riddle. Um, third grade had their concert before, before fall break. That went very well. Um, and Mr. Schneider also talks about fall festival that we hosted over fall break. We had around 90 kids come for that. Went well, a little cold and rainy to start, but kids didn't mind and we got it taken care of. And from what I hear, the best hamburgers and hot dogs ever grilled on the face of this planet. <laughs> Just uh, the worst weather day of the whole beautiful day. I, well, we, we've been very lucky in past years. We've always had beautiful weather. And the kids, they didn't blink an eye. I mean, it was, you know, they were running around. It was, it was, stopped. Oh, but it was so cold. Yeah, it was cold, and then it started spitting rain. I set my daughter with a heavy coat. She chose not to wear it. <laughs> um, as Mrs. Murphy stated, fourth grade also did the I Learn checkpoints for this year. Um, both Columbia and Riddle, we have our picture retakes this Thursday. So parents, if you want your students' picture retaken, Bernackies will be doing that. We figured out when photographers say to tell a kindergartner to say cheese, it's cheese, <laughs> not cheese with a smile. So Dex looks quite funny. We'll be getting redone on Thursday. Um, we'll do on our Halloween door hop. Um, Columbia will be doing theirs next week on the 31st, so on Halloween, and so will Riddle. So kids can dress up and they'll go door to door throughout the, the school and, and collect some candy before the, the real night of Halloween. Let's see what else Mr. Schneider has here at Columbia. They've got Little Zebras basketball starts up uh, tomorrow. The fire prevention with the Rochester Fire Department is on Thursday and Friday. And a shout out to the fire department. They came to Riddle as well. I think the Monday before fall break, we had our fire drill. They brought the trucks in and showed everything. It was pretty cool. So thank you to the, the fire department. Continuing with Columbia, Zebra Zone winners visiting a local farm on Thursday. Uh, kindergarten will be going to Ivy Tech on Friday for the 529 college visit. And November 4th, first grade and kindergarten will be going to a show at the Honeywell Center. And that wraps it up. Any questions for <coughs> Riddle or anything I can pass on to Snyder? No? All right, thank you. Mr. Shanghals. Um, before break, uh, me and the EL teacher, Mrs. Honeycutt, went over to Logan to do a site visit for EL um, to see primarily um, what they were doing over there for the, the kiddos that are brand new into the country, very little English and more of a sheltered classroom type situation. Um, so, you know, just taking some feedback from that. Um, got a grant submitted over break, so those are off my plate. Um, got some trainings coming down the road for uh, my special ed teachers, and that's kind of where I'm at right now in the year. But I appreciate all your support. Mr. Reinhold? Uh, not much in transportation. I'm just busy week getting winter, getting ready for winter maintenance. I've come down for a campaign. Went through every bus, we updated the ECMs. Still working on a few, but all under warranty. <coughs> no uh, other, we got a new driver. Hopefully Thursday, they can step in, fill in a little bit of a gap on subs and 
Another night. It's all going on transportation. <laughs> Maintenance department, we're uh, working on winterization. Uh, we've already started, uh, boiler PMs are already done. So schools are good for the winter. Um, started doing winterization for the sprinklers, the softball field, we've got that done. And then uh, baseball field, we're gonna be doing that. Then getting stuff ready for winter plowing and and all the outdoor things the guys are really looking forward to getting a break from mowing <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know they're they spend a lot of time mowing mowing all the properties so um they do appreciate everything that the board does to support us and the schools so we thank you So we have received in our 2526 contracts um, through our NISIC, which is our co-op, and this is for our Gordon Food Service, Dean's, and Commercial Foods that we will be looking at um, renewing. Next Wednesday, Riddle Elementary will be participating in lunch with what they call the Great Apple Crunch. It's in cooperation with the National Farm to School and National App Month, and the Purdue Extension Office will be in there with us for that. Um, Verification has started of the free reduced applications that usually gets completed about the mid part of November. Our annual financial report or our AFR is also in the process of being finished by November 1st. At all four locations during our intercession, we fed all students that were in the building breakfast, lunch, and at Columbia, they also received a free snack. Um, we have the Kiwanas turkey dinner coming up with this year, we have the pleasure of making the turkeys for them. Normally they would come in from Rochester Meat and Deli. And um, that's pretty much about it for now. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Okay, thank you. Mr. Stone, if you would like to give a brief uh, rundown of our athletic team and the Yeah, so we're wrapping up the fall season, um, like Mr. Hawes said. So we've got cross country running in the regional this week and then football sectional starting. Um, but the rest of the fall has wrapped up um, and then we're moving into the winter with the girls wrestling and girls basketball starting so um, just getting the getting ready for the winter time I'm ready to be out from outside and I'm ready to be inside so <laughs> getting that moving but when it comes to coach Wilson um, he's been on staff now for seven years um, and it has been very evident through our process of finding our next coach that this is who our kids want um, he is very important to them uh, he means a lot to them. We have had so many different meetings where they have come to us and said, Coach Wilson is so important. We get that, right? And so I'm, I'm really glad to have him on staff. Um, I think he's going to keep our program exactly where it's at and just keep that train rolling. So really excited to have Coach Wilson. Mr. Wilson, anything you'd like to say? Uh, <laughs> as he was talking, I was not mentally preparing. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, anything else for the good of the group? The board members? Anybody else in the community have something you'd like to share? I am a homeschool mother whose son um, also attends Rochester High School. Um, he is a hybrid student, we'll call it that. And I speak for a lot of families in the last decade who have decided that the way that public schools are handling themselves, they can do it better. And they have decided to remove their children from public schools and have succeeded in teaching their children at home in an effort to bring up sports back to our children, trying to create what do I want to say, um, a symbiotic relationship where they can still have the good things. It is disappointing to see two schools now handle situations that their communities at large were not in agreement with. And it's disheartening because I believe that 
we as adults and communities can do better than that. Faculty members don't have to resign or retire with bitterness or difficulty. There can be a better way. But there can't unless somebody steps up and say, I think we need to take another look at this. Unless that happens, no progress will be made. And though I'm appreciative that the program will continue, my son is sitting out this entire year just so that he could be part of this. And for this to happen immediately after, and learning some of the details where semantics is what dictates what happens and can be interpreted according to whose desires or specific people's desires, it's disheartening. And I just want to challenge everyone to raise the bar a little higher and let the families in the community know that your schools are going to treat people with respect and that the faculty members will retire with respect and that we can give that same example to our students. Thank you. wrestling sanction this year will they be hiring a girls head coach you want me to speak to it go ahead <laughs> <laughs> the way it's been approved we're treating it the same way we treat our cross country and our track program so we have one head coach who is in charge of both programs so coach Wilson is our head wrestling coach for the varsity program so he's in charge of both the boys and the girls is that per ISHA guidelines uh, there's no guidelines that say you have to have two separate coaches, no. So. Okay. What about uh, the wrestling facilities? My understanding is the girls can no longer practice with the boys. Uh, to my understanding, that's not a rule, but uh, we typically do separate because of num overall numbers anyways. Like as of now in our final forms, we have roughly 45, 46 wrestlers between the boys and the girls at the high school. Doesn't really fit smoothly in our, in our wrestling room. Um, it's a little tight in there when you stick 46 kids in. So we already have, you know, kind of put that hybrid together where we send some to the auxiliary gym and we're able to put mats down in there. Okay, so if you can put 46 kids in half of the varsity and the wrestling room per se, the JV and the gym, and where are you going to put the girls? No, the girls typically are, are going in that with either in the auxiliary gym or they're in the main wrestling room. Well, I could be totally wrong. Please check on it. I believe, being as they sanctioned this year, the girls are not allowed to practice with the boys, and I would think Title X, is that correct? Title IX. Title IX, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to hire a specific girls coach. I believe that's a new rule being <coughs> sanctioned it this year. Yeah. I'll, I'll gladly look into it and make sure we're correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anyone else before we well, So you're not bringing guard back at all? Not even as a volunteer? You don't even have to pay him. He wants to be here for our kids. Right now. I'm not on the, I'm not on the list, so they can't do anything about that. Okay, sorry. I don't know how these things work. I just wanted to know. This winter season have already been approved and, um, uh, and seconded. So, uh, so guard won't be here this season whatsoever. So we're gonna have to look, maybe hope that he's part of the coaching system in 2025, 2026. At this point, I'm not making any promises on what, what the future looks like. Oh, well, I understand that, but for the 24, 2025 20, school year, there will be no guard. You know, I, I don't know what the exact parameters are that have been set around that. And uh, so I can speak to you. And you're here for our kids. Thank you. I appreciate it. I am here for your kids. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about cross country having the same coach. Or Have any of you ever gone to a wrestling match? New, maybe, Hortense? Um, any of you? School board. 
one time, maybe? Okay, would you want your daughter, who is fanatic about wrestling, practice with the boy? That is why they, they want, since it's sanctioned, two different areas of practice. I agree with that. I mean, it's, it's only common <coughs> sense. I think it's important to understand when the girls wrestling was sanctioned. We were told as a boy, and I realize none of you were at that meeting, so you didn't hear the conversation, but all of us at that time were like, great, finally. We've had lots of girls interested in wrestling, lots of girls who've been involved in the program. Finally, they're being yeah, recognized by IHSAA. Yeah, so then, then, I'm guys. sorry, my turn. Then we asked Superintendent Vance, how does this work? What are the next steps? How do we make it official? She says, I, we haven't done it. You know, IHSAA hasn't done this for a while. And so I think there's a form. I will get it, you know, we'll get it to the AD. We'll, we'll get it to, you know, the coaches and we'll see exactly, you know, how this program is going to fit in. The next meeting, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, board members, the next meeting, we had the form filled out for girls wrestling. Great. All of us looked at the criteria that, you know, the coaches from the previous season had said, this is what we need, these are the coaches we need, this is the, how the program will work, and I'm not even sure any of us really even had a question. We were like, hey, that's great, fabulous. Motion second approved, awesome, get the door running. If there are requirements, Mr. Stone already said this, if there are requirements by the IHSAA that require a girls coach, if there are requirements by the IHSAA that require separate facilities, if the coaches come to us and say, our student athletes are not comfortable, our students athletes might need something a little different than what we have been doing. We, nothing is going to change for as far as I understand from what's been done the last few years. But if, it, if the students athletes go to the coaches and say, I think we need something different. Then this board is always open to that conversation. Nobody has ever said we are absolutely not going to do this. It's not even been in the spectrum of the conversation. So forgive me for being a little frustrated with this conversation, but I was at those meetings. I remember what I said, and what I said was awesome. I am ecstatic that IHSAA is finally, finally saying that the girls wrestling is should be out front just like the boys. That's my answer to the question on girls wrestling. Please, coaches in attendance, if as you go forward, please do not be shy about talking to this board about what you need for girls wrestling. For any sport, for that matter, I'm just pointing at girls because brand new at this point in the IHSAA's eyes. But you, you all have access to our emails through the uh, district website. Did you sign up to be a speaker, Hunt? Earlier, yes. We've yes. Been, our rules are that we've, you've already spoken the on rule, a topic. Yeah, you cannot speak again if you've already spoken. And I did It's not even about guard. I can only talk once about one thing. What's your question? Well, my question was, but that wasn't even the answer to the question. You're, you were getting angry, stating, yeah, we've talked about it. But here's my concern and only from a women, and also because I've been told by an admin of our schools that you're not supposed to listen to kids, kids lie. Do yeah. we have a woman coach, who can, or assistant, or any manager, whatever, that can sit and watch a guy and girl wrestle, so that if, if, it's a big if, that girl or boy says, they sexually harassed me, we have a witness saying, no, it did not happen. That would be my concern. Because, once again, kids talk, and you're not supposed to listen to them, they lie. Um, and I was told that by an admin when I had a complaint. So, what are we gonna do with that? I mean, that's only my concern. I agree, girls wrestling has needed to go a long time ago as a sanctioned sport. But other than that, that would be my concern. It is a very intimate sport. This is public comment, it's not public debate. I know. I'm just asking a question right now. And we're not we're not allowed to respond. 
Did you tell me that I can't speak again? Yeah. Yeah. So you can keep eyes on three groups of wrestlers and make sure that there's not inappropriate touches. Or girls don't wrestle boys, yes. I agree with that too. But. They don't. Our girls they do. Yes. Hey, hey. Hey. It, the girls are not wrestling the boys in season. Okay. It is not allowed anymore. Okay. So they will okay. not practice together yep. anymore. I, I promise. I promise. That's fine. I got it. Okay. Thank you. I made a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Seconded by Jenny. The motion has carried. Are all in favor? Raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Thank you all for your time.